We have a man here, his name is Elkanah. The Bible does not tell us much about the man, but we do know that he feared the Lord. And we do understand by the scripture that the man had two wives. And you and I have read there, the man had how many wives? Two wives. The one was called Hannah and the other one was called Benina. Then the Bible continues to tell us that uh, Benina had children, but Hannah had no child. And as a result, Penina used to provoke, to mock, and used to, you know, mock Hannah because the Lord had shut up her womb. You see, the Bible then tells us something here, and I want us to pay attention to it because I'm going to take you deeper in a few seconds. The Bible then tells us that Hannah was a woman of prayer. And how does the Bible tell us that? It tells us that, that year after year, she went to Shiloh, and it was in the house of God that Eli the priest and his sons were there. So this woman who does not have children, the Bible tells us that year after year, she went to the house of the Lord. And I want to encourage somebody who's watching online on TV and right here with me, that no matter how bad things go and no matter how bad things, uh, you know, will happen in your life, will take shape in your life, uh, never stop going to the house of the Lord. No matter how crazy your life uh, becomes, never stop going to the house of the Lord. We see it with uh, this woman called Hannah. She never stopped uh, going to the house uh, of the Lord. And the Bible tells us that her husband loved her more than Benina and she will give twice uh, uh, as much uh, when it comes to her because the husband tried uh, to close that gap of you don't have children but I still love you. But because she did not have children, the Bible tells us that it bothered her even more. But there is a mystery that I want to reveal to you, and if you catch it, your life will never be the same again. We know Samuel in the Bible, but we don't know how Samuel was born. You see, when you read the Bible, you then realize that Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, is called the son of David. But now, there is no David without Samuel. Because it was Samuel who anointed David. And there is no Samuel without Hannah. And there is no Samuel without Eli. So the birth of Samuel was a miracle. And let me pass by here. Somebody say pass by, Apostle. When we look at Samuel, we see how many people were blessed by his ministry and by his prophetic grace in the entire Bible. That simple means uh, Samuel was not here for himself. But Samuel was here for other people's breakthroughs. Some of you need to understand that your breakthrough is not your breakthrough. When God delivers you, your children will be delivered. Some of you, the devil knows that once you get money, your entire generation will be free from the spirit of poverty. So he's fighting you harder, not because you have bad luck. He's fighting you harder because you are a doorway. Oh, let me talk to my people. Maybe they are here. Once you are a doorway, the battles you fight are not normal battles. Because once your door opens, it does not matter the other doors. They will automatically unlock. And I feel in my spirit today, somebody, you are more than just what you are. You are a doorway to your family. You are a doorway to your generation. You are a doorway to your children. You are a doorway to your family's surname. You are a doorway to your mother's life. You are a doorway to your sibling's life. That once you prosper, everybody prospers. And the devil is a liar. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. Please be seated. So Hannah, her womb is shut. But she does not stop going to the house of the Lord. And my Bible tells me, I'm about to preach now, that one day, as usual, she went to the house of the Lord and she began to vow a vow. My Bible tells me 
that as she began to pray, she got to a point where she could not utter words. Meaning words could not come out of her mouth. The Bible says she was in bitterness of soul. She knew what she wanted to say before God. But because of her situation and because of how she was feeling, she could not utter a word. But I'm glad because the Bible then says something. It says then Eli the priest noticed her. You know, in the spirit, things don't happen because they are supposed to happen. But things happen because of moments. I don't know how many times she went to the church. Because the Bible tells us that year after year she used to go. But on that day, Eli was the one at the door. Maybe some of you don't read your Bibles. Let me help you understand. So that it doesn't look like I'm out of line. When she went, the Bible says year after year she went there. I want you to understand that Eli, he was the bishop of the church at that time. But under him, he had two sons. Meaning in the church, he was hardly there. But his sons were the ones who will notice people coming in and going out. Meaning when Hannah went year after year, Hophni and his brother were the ones in the temple. But they did not have the prophetic insight that their father Eli had. But on this day when Hannah was praying, the Bible says by the doorstep there was prophet, priest Eli. Some of you are getting it. So on that day, Eli was at the door. And as she's praying, the Bible says her lips froze. And they started moving, but words were not coming out. And Eli noticed her. Eli did what? Noticed her. You see, some people don't understand why people go crazy when they're in the prophetic church. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. One time, I was prophesying. And uh, I located a young man. And as I located him, I said, by the spirit of God, I see a breakthrough stand up. And as he stood up, he just stood up. He went like this. And next to him, a young man stood up. And he started shouting next to him. I think some of you were there in Val. How many were you, of you were there? All right, so some people were there in Val. And guess what? I looked at the one who's sitting next to him. He is not the one I'm prophesying to. I looked at him and he's just looking at me like this. And I looked at the other one. He's jumping, he's excited, he's receiving. I said, brother, I'm sorry, but sit down. Let me prophesy to this gentleman. Why? Because he made sure that my anointing notices him. And guess what? Some will, some will say, but why? Guess what? As soon as I began to speak to him, I began to prophesy that which was meant for that other guy upon him. And the spirit of the Lord told me there is a job coming. And if you remember, he said the following Monday, how many of you were there? He testified that the following Monday, he received a call. And guess what? They did not even hesitate. He started immediately. That the following Sunday, he was in front testifying that for a long time, he has been looking for a job. But I want you to understand that the prophecy was not for him. The prophecy was for the other gentleman. But the guy understood how the prophetic works. At the end of the day, he must notice me. I, uh... I don't know if you remember one time I'm in the vault like this and I'm ministering and there is a young man I went to him I said you pray the prayer you young man today and you said if I am a prophet I will locate you how many of you remember you were there please lift up your hand don't just lift up and put it down so that people know uh, even somebody online was there listen to this as soon as I passed him I went like you prayed today and you said if I'm a true man of God I will locate you today. I've located you, but I won't speak to you. Sit down. Come on, somebody. Then there are people with that attitude. If he's a man of God, or if it's meant for me, it will be for me. Then you come to church and you sit like this. The devil is a lie. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent took it by force. 
I said the violence took it by force. The violence took it by force. The woman with the issue of blood did not say, if God loves me, Jesus will come to my house. She said, I might as well as go where Jesus is. And if he's not going to notice me, I'm going to touch the hem of his garment. No words were not coming out, but she never stopped praying. She uttered no word, but she was praying. Her lips were moving. That is a mystery. That the prophet noticed there, and it was the prophet who went to her and said, why are you drunk so early in the morning? And she said, your servant is not drunk. But I'm a woman with a sorrowful spirit. I'm a woman with some unanswered questions. I'm a woman with a lot of question marks. Then the prophet, the, the, the apostle, asked her and said, but what is your problem? Then she began to tell the man of God that she's trusting God for a baby. But watch this now. She was very specific for a baby boy. So someday got it right there. She was very specific for a baby boy. And then the prophet now looked at her and said something. And this is where our message is taking off. Go thy way. For the God of Israel has answered you. Another vision will say, go thy way. Next year, by this time. Ay, 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 ay. Please be seated, please be seated, please be seated. Go thy way. Next year, by this time. There is a mystery here that I want us to focus on. I'm left with 10 minutes. Say, what is the mystery? Since you know that Hannah was barren, Hannah was married, and she also had a sister in marriage called Penina who was mocking her. Now the prophet Eli spoke to her next year by this time. And I'm saying to you, there is a mystery. What is the mystery? Somebody holler, what is the mystery? You see, the mystery here, it was not uh, in uh, Elkanah being the husband uh, and desiring to have children with Hannah. But the mystery here was in Hannah herself. Somebody holler, what is the mystery, Apostle? As soon, and I want to show you where the mistake is, where, where you people make mistakes. As soon as Hannah received the word, we don't see in the Bible Hannah praying. Say, what is the mystery, Apostle? So, Hannah left the house of God, left the place of prayer, left Shiloh pregnant in the spirit. So, her prayer is, I want a baby. Then the prophet comes, next year by this time, you shall have your baby. So, we don't see her, after receiving that word, continuing to pray. Meaning as soon as she received that word, she left the house of God pregnant. But she was not pregnant in the physical. She was pregnant in the spirit. So when she went home, she went home to conceive that which she had received in the spirit. That was too deep. Uh, who's getting it here? Who's getting it here? Now watch this now. The mistake you make, you want to receive that which you did not conceive. The problem with you is you want to receive that which you have not conceived. The mystery of receiving is in conceiving. You cannot go to the hospital today and say, I'm coming here to deliver. And when they look at your bele bele, your bele bele says another story. Meaning one has to be what? Expectant. One has to be pregnant uh, to do what? To deliver. It is in the delivering that you are receiving. So you can receive a baby that you did not conceive. So the mistake people make in the house of God, in the church today, is to receive something that they have not conceived. 
That's why in our ministry, we emphasize that is so. Than I receive. Because it is in the that is so that you are conceiving. Am I talking to somebody right now? That's why we have a lot of people today, a lot of churches that when a man of God stand up, which is the right way, and begin to declare, they all say that is so. But very few people know what it means and where it came from. Because we are the one who started it. We then understood that the mystery of receiving is in conceiving. Let me shock you now. You see, all along, the Bible says year after year, she went to the house of God praying for a baby. Meaning, she kept on trying with her husband, Elkanah. But every time she tried, the results came back said negative. But this time around, when Eli spoke to her, she conceived in the spirit. And how did she conceive? She conceived when the prophet said, next year by this time. I'm on my own right here. No, 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 no. I'm quitting this. I'm quitting this. I don't know who I'm talking to right here. I'm talking to somebody right here. So she conceived in the spirit. Before she received in the physical. No wonder why scripture will say, as a man thinketh in his mind, so is he. Meaning you cannot produce on the outside what is not in your mind. Your mind determines the direction you will take. Your mind determines what you will utter. Jesus said in the Bible out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so the mouth can only gush out what is in the heart so if the heart is empty the mouth will be empty so you cannot receive what you have not conceived so the reason why Hannah all these years could not give birth is because she had not yet conceived but it was after when the apostle Mizim Swaket and Krede said next year by this time uh, be seated please so all along she was trying to receive because uh, it's one thing for Elkanah to give the seed and she expected conception to take place. But conception does not start in the physical. Conception starts in the spirit. And some of you need to understand that the fact that you're not driving as yet, it does not mean you have not conceived. You have conceived, but this is your time for receiving. Because one thing about conception is conception is silent. Conception is quiet. Uh, let, let me help you understand what I'm saying. Conception is quiet. But when it's delivery time, you see the woman kicking the tables. You see the woman shouting, mm. You see the woman saying, ah. Why? Because when you deliver, ah. Even if you want to hold it, you can't hold it. Uh, I hear God saying to somebody right here, all oh, these years it was your conception time. Ah, you have conceived it. But 2023, you shall deliver it. You shall receive it. Somebody shout, that is so. Look at your neighbor and say, it is just a matter of time. In this season, brothers and sisters, one need to conceive it in the spirit. When the apostle says, I see a house, you can't be seeing nothing but a house. When apostle says, I'm seeing marriage, refuse to see anything else. Ah, 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 ah. When apostle says, I'm seeing a car, refuse to see anything else. You better see a car. Because as far as your eyes will see, Abraham, I will give it to you. 
and God said to Abraham, as far as your eyes will see, the question is, uh, when apostle is preaching, what do you see? One of my daughters there, I prophesied to her. She had no house. Now she has 128 units under her name. We were live with uh, some of my sons and daughters. Uh, where is Nati? Where is Nati? Went out. Nati was there. Nati was there as well. Uh, most of them, Charity and others, they were there. While we were alive, one of, one of my sons says, uh, while we were alive, you know, it's a mentorship thing. Dad, can I please buy you uh, this nice penthouse in Cape Town that I saw? If Dad allows, can I just buy it now? They were there. And then I said, not yet. I don't need it. Are we together? Those people who are receiving, most of them there, they are not broke. <laughs> they understand the power of a word that comes out from the mouth of the prophet. You, you can see them going like this. Most of them, they run companies. It's because they understood that there is power when a prophet speaks. You see, I remember one time I stood in front of people and I said to them, I'm hearing cars and they received. I remember that season, people were just standing in front. It was like crazy. Somebody will get a license today. The following day, they bought a car. And this year, what I'm seeing is the houses. I don't know why. I, uh, in this church, the next flex will be houses and land. Please be seated. And notice if you may, I'm closing now. Notice if you may. Notice if you may. Hannah, she did not, in her prayer, you and I did not, did not read that, mention Benina. Say, that's deep. that's deep. Say, let's go higher, Apostle. Let's go higher. We didn't read about it. Where she said, Penina in a prayer. Most of you are missing it there. If it was you, you would have been mentioning Penina more than your prayer request. I don't know who taught Christians that, but it has become a doctrine where when people are in the church, they will say things like, I kill my enemies. Can I correct this error? Somebody say, correct it, Apostle. One more time, say, correct it, Apostle. Ah, these ones, they don't want me to correct it. This, they are the ones who this ones. Should I correct it? See, Zoom is saying I must call. You see why I love Zoom more than anything? You see? They, they know how to, to speak, yet I can't hear them. <laughs> Watch this. This thing of you praying every time, God kill my enemies. God kill my enemies. God do this to my enemies. God do this to my enemies is unbiblical. Let me tell you. We see it with this woman of God. She had a revelation. She never said, God, Benina is mocking at me and mocking me and persecuting me. Kill her. But she rather focused on her prayer point. I don't know which verse you read that says, kill your enemies. I seriously don't know. Stop wasting your energy. Because if you are going to pray a prayer, you need to think, you need to use wisdom. If you are going to pray a prayer of, oh God, kill my enemies, you are somebody's enemy. You are also somebody's enemy. Somebody can easily pray a prayer and say, kill my enemies, referring to you. While you are praying for others to die, somebody wants you to die too. 
So when you use wisdom, you then now understand that it is not the prayer of God, kill my enemies, that I should pray. It is the prayer of God, give them long life. Why? Because David says he prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. Meaning without no, with no enemies, no table. So the presence of your enemies is the presence of your table. But you remove enemies, there is no table. Enemies equals to table. But you remove enemies, no table. So some of you, you have no table because you are killing your enemies. You didn't hear what I just said. You really didn't hear what I just said. God wants to see your enemies glorifying him because of your success. You only get worried. Oh, they will stop me. Let me stop them before they stop me. When you know who you is, you know you are unstoppable. No one can stop you. No one can stop God's assignment in your life. Let them try. The Bible says, they shall come in one direction. But they shall flee in seven directions. Let them come in one direction. Your God will roar once. The lion of the tribe of Judah will roar once. And they will scatter in seven directions. Somebody under the influence of my voice. You don't serve a dead God. But you serve a mighty God. And when he says yes. No man can say no. When he opens a door. No man can close the door. And if God is on your side. Power is on your side. Victory is on your side. Glory is on your side. Grace is on your side. Somebody lift up your right hand and shout, that is so. Please be seated in the Holy Ghost. Another singer knows it better. And the singer says, Umu Jehovah, Come on now. If you believed that, you will not be entertaining wrong people. Because when God opens a door, I don't care even if your professor doesn't like you. I don't care even if your boss doesn't like you. When God says yes, no man can say no. If you don't believe me, ask Joseph. Joseph was in prison. He moved from prison straight to the palace. Good God. From prison to a prime minister. Good God. From prison to being a president. Good God. Because when God opens a door, no man can close the door. And the man of God said, next year by this time. Next year by this time. Ah, next year by this time. You see, you need to understand that there are things that will need next year by this time. But then again, there are things that need next week by this time. I don't know who I was talking to right there. I said, there are things that need next year by this time. Like a baby. A baby needs next year by this time. But there are certain things that need next week by this time. Next month by this time. Next quarter by this time. Ah! If you are hearing me and I'm preaching to you, lift up your hand and shout that is so three times. Tell your neighbor and say he's talking to me right now. Let me close this. Let me put a cap on it. Please be seated. I'm closing now. Some of you women need to understand that Penina served as a motivation in Hannah's life. What do you mean, Apostle? I'm glad you asked. She motivated Hannah to stay in prayer. Some of you, God has put certain people in your life uh, that look like your enemies. But the truth of the matter is uh, they are to push you into the prayer room. Uh, sometimes when I'm on my own, uh, I start thanking God for my enemies. <laughs> because some of us would not have been where we are if it wasn't for our enemies. <laughs> they thought they were burying us. <laughs> Little did they know we were seeds. <laughs> and you don't kill seeds. <laughs> when you bury a seed, <laughs> you are giving it time to germinate. <laughs> uh, I wish I was talking to somebody right here. You are unkillable. You are unkillable. 
I said, you are unkillable. I said, you are unkillable. If you were killable, the enemy should have wiped you long time ago. I'm telling you, the people there in Cosmo City, some of you, they should have wiped you long time ago. They did, they did not like how you walk. They did not like how you talk. So if it was in them, they would have wiped you long time ago. But because you are a child of the Most High, God is your Father. Jesus is your Lord. Angels are your protectors. You are unkillable. Somebody pat yourself on your chest and say, I'm unkillable. Please be seated. Please be seated. I need to close now. You are unkillable. Some of you don't believe what the apostle is saying. If you were killable, COVID-19 should have wiped you out. Some coughed once and they never made it. May their soul rest in peace. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you, you never even coughed. Some of you, you coughed once and it died in your body. Why? Because you are unkillable. All you need to do is to conceive it. You know, God says in his word to Abraham, as far as your eyes will see, I will give you that place. Meaning, I am the God. I am Jehovah that gives. But you need to see. And Abraham stood and he began to see. And God says, whatever you see, it's yours. So you need to conceive it before you receive it. The problem with you, every time you come to church, you know you have a desire. But you don't have the ability to conceive anything. Even when we declare to you, there is a house coming to somebody. But because you know your bank balance, you then measure the declaration word against your bank balance. You use your bank balance as a measuring stick to the miracle God is going to give you in that season. If God did what he could and what he can for us because of what we have, some of us will not have been here. Because even to preach to some of us is grace. There are men who are eloquent. There are men who are good in speech. Men who can structure words, articulate words. And God went to the bushes of Mpumalanga and picked the Apostle Mies. While I was minding my business, never prayed to be a preacher. I never in my entire life prayed to say, God, me, preacher, never. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's election by grace. So God does not look at what you have. Men will look at your outside appearance. But God, like he said to Samuel, he look at what is in your heart. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is dangerous for you to trust God for something that you have not conceived. Because you will wait for a moment that will never take place. Okay. Let me talk to those who are online. You are very... You are, not very, you are not here. You are not here. It's dangerous to trust God for something that you have not conceived in the spirit. You will wait for defining moments until Jesus comes. Not that you did not trust him for it, but did you conceive it? That's why the Bible is very clear. It says Jesus was crucified before the foundation of what? Of this world. So Jesus comes to this world already crucified. So he's on an assignment. Every time he feels like life is getting hard, he would then remember. That's what the Bible says. And he prayed and he said what? Take away the cup. Because Jesus now didn't want to die no more. Come on now, talk back to me. It's in your Bible. Which Bible are you reading? I don't know. The way you look surprised. He said, take away the cup. I don't want to do this no more. The Bible says, but he remembered. What was he remembering? He remembered and he said, not my will, but let your will be done. He remembered that this now will pass. You see, the, oh Lord, oh Lord, there is no resurrection without dying. The mystery is not in the womb. The mystery is in the tomb. It was in him dying and after three days resurrected. 
You listen, the reason why you and I, we believe in Jesus and we serve Jesus and we love Jesus is because of his resurrection. We are the result of the resurrection. If Jesus died, though you'll have preached good, healed others, and never resurrected, wouldn't serve Jesus. Because many came, and some separated the water, died, but never resurrected. I'm talking about Moses now. Elisha's bones, when he died, raised the dead. But Elisha could not raise himself. Only Jesus died and came back after three days. One will say, but Lazarus came back. Listen, Lazarus was resurrected by the one who resurrected himself. They locked him and closed the tomb. I don't know what they used, but I can see it in my perfect view. They wrote no exit. They knew he was not coming out. That even the women, they wondered, who shall roll the stone for us? They put a stone there that no man can roll. Do you know that when Jesus died, they put soldiers in Jesus' tomb? That's why when he resurrected, they, 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 the Pharisees, they paid people to tell people that the soldiers were sleeping and his disciples came and stole him. And, and, and stole him. So when Jesus, they wanted to make it they wanted it to be impossible for Jesus to resurrect because he had said that. Destroy this temple and in three days I will build it again. They put two soldiers. Read your Bible correct. Read it correctly so that when I preach I don't look like I'm out of my mind. They put a soldier here and they put a soldier here. Then they put a very strong stone. Jesus himself got himself up like this. Like what? Like this. I want to show you how it happened. Jesus, after he resurrected like this, like, a, like this, he didn't struggle. That's what I'm trying to say to you. He didn't kick, 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 kick. No, 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 no. He just got up like this. Undertaker has nothing on Jesus. I'm telling you now. If you want to see the real comeback, look at Jesus. The man got up like this. I know they did not have watch, watches by that time. But when he looked, he realized it's exactly three days after. And the Bible says, when the disciples looked for him in the tomb, they did not find him. But they found what? A folded napkin. Right? And that napkin was where? On his head. Meaning Jesus, after resurrection, he didn't resurrect and started running. My man resurrected, rolled the napkin, and he had time to fold it. And he put it there nicely. Somebody had a nicely. What are you talking about? I serve a big God. Scripture says, I wish above all things you prosper. And be in good health. Somebody this year. This year we are receiving. This year we are in a delivery room. We are in the labor room this year. All along we have, we have conceived it in the spirit. By the reason of new creation realities. But spiritual realities now. This doesn't allow us to conceive. Allow us now to receive to manifest I want to pray for people right now Amen. by the spirit of God Amen. by the spirit of Jehovah Amen. I want to pray for people Amen. and listen to me once I pray for you your life will never be the same those who are trusting God for promotion you better receive if you are in here because those who are online, that even on TV, they are receiving better than you. If you are trusting God for promotion, scripture says promotion is not from the east, <laughs> from the west, from the north, from the south, but it's from the Lord. Meaning God decides who get promoted. May it be so in the name of Jesus. In every area of your life, may you be promoted.
I said, may you be promoted. See yourself as I'm declaring. See yourself moving from that position to another position. Listen, you need to conceive it to receive it. Those who are saying, man of God, I'm tired of moving in cycles. Man of God, I want to see progress in my life. I prophesy upon your life. Whatever that has been holding you, I set you free from it right now. If it is doubt, I set you free from doubt. If it is laziness, I set you free from laziness. Church, I want you to notice with me here, and I want you to pay attention with me here. When Hannah received the prophetic word, it was said, next year by this time, you shall have your baby. I want you to understand that that's one part of it. But another part of it is in her meeting her husband. Did you get it now? Meaning the spiritual part of it had happened. If I stand here and I say I'm seeing a house, it is one part of it. One needs to see online houses for sale in a place like this, like this, like this. Ayah. Let me minister to my people online nicely.